I knew back then that I was, I had, you know, that I had such a responsibility and that artists and hype and directors and the record label and the management were trusting the image and likeness of that artist mm. in my hands. What is a look? Does it define your mood, your personality, your style? Are you telling the world who you are on the inside by the look you rock on the outside? And what if a look can define a generation? In 1997, hip hop was already a growing force in pop culture, but songs like The Rain and Mo Money Mo Problems pushed the visual language of hip hop into the future. Hip hop took a stylistic change away from a strictly street inspired uniform into a world that was sometimes Afrofuturistic, sometimes high fashion, but always pushing the limits of self expression. This is Coco Butter's The Era. And today, we explore the impact of hip hop style in the 90s through the eyes of an icon, June Ambrose. Hello, Hi. hello. How are you? I'm great. I've stepped into the universe, so yes, I'm fantastic. You are. Yes, you are. <laughs> do, you feel the, do you feel the air? I, I feel the air it changing, surrounding shifting. me. We're in a new planet right now. Yep. We're in your yep. world. Now, before you got in the fashion industry, mm -hmm. you were an investment banker. I was. What was that transition like for you? And what was it about styling that stood out to you? Mm. Well, I was a theater major before I went into finance. So I was secretly an actress. I don't think I've told that story. It's an actress? Long time. I was an actress. So whenever I didn't get the role in the theatrical piece, I would become the costume designer. Okay. And costume design was something that I was always very fascinated by. I used to cut up dresses as a child and make clothes. And, and my mom was, you know, worked in retail and she had her own atelier in the Car Caribbean. So. It's like, you know, it was a natural, finance wasn't the natural place for me to land um, after school, <laughs> but it was an important place for me to land because it really kind of cemented me professionally. Because, you know, creative people, we tend to be like butterflies. We speak dolphin, we, go, <laughs> we don't think about the <laughs> yeah. business. So I think that that experience prepared me for a long career. Mm going off and starting my own company. Yeah, absolutely. And you have such a unique eye. So were there any artists or people that you had your eyes on and then you're like, I just got to get a hold of them? In the 90s, there weren't costume designers and stylists running around the music business. Yeah. The art, the artists were pretty much dressing themselves. Yeah. The bands were dressing themselves. It was very alternative. The managers would go and shop and whatever. So it's not until music video became kind of more thought out and um, scripted and we started to recreate movies, iconic movies that we loved and started to really and directors like Hype Williams really started to kind of create these treatments that really required a, an aesthetic that was about costume designing. It wasn't just about high fashion. Yeah, we played with high fashion, but those doors didn't open right away. You know, when I first started out, designers wouldn't even lend me a sock. And that was okay, because it actually forced me to tap into a skill set that I, that was dormant inside of me. There wasn't any social media in the 90s. So how did you find your clients? How did you get in the mix with the with the cool kids? Like So that's a good question. <laughs> I took an internship at a record company, looking at their artists, listening, doing a lot of listening and waiting for the opportunity to kind of slide in and say because we didn't have access. Now we have so much access. We had to create our own Absolutely. table. Absolutely. We didn't even ask for a seat at the you table. Said, I'm we said we're going to build. This we did a table. we had a Tyler Perry moment. <laughs> 90s saw a reemergence of black pride and symbols associated with Pan-Africanism drove the look of musicians. Black, red, and green colors, Africa-shaped jewelry, military-inspired outfits. The word was rebellion, but as we move deeper into the decade, the word transformed into bling. Right around the time that rappers like Biggie came out, their look reflected the content of their songs. Reaping the rewards of a successful hustler meant looking gritty, and gritty it was. Seemingly inspired by the look of old school prohibition era gangsters, hip hop style eventually evolved. Just like hip hop was born out of the art of the remix, black fashion was remixing style and the world was taking notice. June, in frequent collaboration with music video director and icon Hype Williams, crafted a vision that edged itself into everyone's minds, including the famous suit that Missy Elliott dubbed her hip-hop Michelin woman look. An outfit so iconic, 
Elliott brought it back for her mind-blowing performance at the 2019 VMAs in honor of her finally receiving the Video Vanguard Award. Being an immigrant, being from the islands, how did you bring that, that flavor, that style into your looks? Like, we were it. just like, I have to make sure I, I rep for my people. So when I did the um, More Money, More Problems music video, and Puffy was in this shiny, metallic red leather suit, him and Mace. It was from like, you know, Carnival. I would always see like, you know, it was always bright and flashy. And you always heard like a reggae song, a patra, <laughs> break it all down. Like, it was yeah. like, always wanted to grind. But I mean, like for the, on the street level, anything shiny was not even a conversation. Wow. I mean, there was so many daring moments that we had Missy Elliott in the blow up suit. You know, here we are looking at women in hip hop. You know, it was a time when it was like ladies first, then it became very provocative, and then it became kind of like the exploitation of women. And here came Missy Elliott. She allowed it there to be a space for artists like Lizzo. Mm. This self-liberation, this I'm so proud. Um, Missy, you know, was fearless as well. Yeah, and styling Missy on the, the Rain Super Duper Fly video, is it true? that you had to go to the gas station to fill yes. the suit up multiple times? Oh, that times? suit was a nightmare. What, what, what was, was it? It, just, it kept deflating? It kept deflating. It had a very small... Listen, it was the first time that we were. I was even building anything of this nature. Yeah. And it had a slight... Which worked out to our advantage. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Some, some of my biggest mistakes. <laughs> And in hindsight, yeah. and when I had to recreate it recently for the MTV Awards, I had two suits built inside of, I had, so I had a backup. And wasn't it a quick turnaround? it was live TV. It was a quick turnaround. But the suit itself, the first original suit, had a small uh, hole, mm -hmm. so it kept deflating. So we took it to the gas station. I thought I could pump it up with a bicycle pump initially. <laughs> and then when we started to do it, Hype looked at me and he says, well, well this is going to take 10 days. He was like, really? I said, okay. I said to my assistants, find a gas station. We went to the gas station, we hooked her up, we blew her up, and then we walked. As we were walking her back from the gas station, she's sl slowly deflating. But that was okay, because I hooked up my bicycle pump to it, I stood be <laughs> behind her, and as and, and actually, it, the suit losing air allowed for the dance movements mm -hmm. and the pop locking to perform actually better. And you're the architect of that, right? You're shaping, oh, yeah. you're laying the groundwork for them to see the vision. Exactly. So when you have someone like Puffy, who wasn't a fan of the shiny suits at no. first, right? He wasn't here for it. <laughs> it so how do you get people like that out of their comfort zone? I had zone? to make two suits. Two? I So I made the matte leather. Okay. And then I made the shiny one. Okay. And I was so annoyed because I was like, <laughs> I know it's the shiny. Yeah. But because I was covering myself and I was being smart, but I, know, I never felt or wavered that the shiny suit wasn't it. So bringing two for me felt like I would be sending the signal that I wasn't too sure. Mm. So I had to make it very clear that I would put my career and I would literally lay down my creative integrity for this moment. And he was looking at me like, you have balls. <laughs> and, <I was> like, <laughs> and I was like, just one shot. Just do one shot. So he did the shot with the red leather suit, whatever. Hype Williams and I were always on the same page. We were like inseparable. And that's also made such a huge difference. You know, we always, we kind of went in plotting together always. So we shot the red suit. And then I was like, okay, I'm in the corner pouting <laughs> attitude. Call me Miss Two. <laughs> and then we <laughs> and then we went and we shot the shiny suit. And it was legendary. The entire set was just like, what just happened? When you're working with these people, how did he push you creatively, especially with belly, these amazing cinematography, the visual looks? How did that push yeah. you as creative? I mean, I definitely pushed me at every curve. Mm -hmm. Like he really kind of um, helped me to see myself in a way that I couldn't see myself. And when I thought I had it right, and when I thought it was good, he would be like, mm. but I never felt um, abused or I never, I never took it personal. I wanted to understand the theory because I didn't go to school for costume design. So I, you know, I didn't have a choice, but you know, to, to be a sponge, to listen, to consume, to make mistakes that that were that some of them turned out to be magical mistakes. Some of them I had to stand, you know, stand by, stand by them and say, okay, you may not like it or get it, but I'm gonna have to stand by it. Whether it was whether, you know, we felt like it was a mistake or not. Yeah. It's like a presidency. You never really <laughs> say when you're like wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but I knew back then that I was I had, you know, 
that I had such a responsibility and that artists and hype and directors and the record label and the management were trusting the image and likeness of that artist in my hands. June Ambrose took inspiration from the soul of the individual to create iconic looks that were linked to that artist. The pinnacle example of this new style came in the form of belly. Hype Williams' 1998 feature-length film and visual masterpiece, which June masterminded with her costume design. June's eye for style took Jay-Z out of the baggy pants and put him into a suit, marking his transition from entertainer to businessman and mogul. Her, along with other style icons like Misa Hilton, shaped the visual look of a generation. You mentioned this earlier, there was once a time when hip hop wasn't even the same conversations as high-end fashion oh. designers. And now we see it all the time, it's so prominent. Do you ever take a moment and stop and look at the fact that your work played a huge part in that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Discrimination amongst people of color in high fashion still exists. I had to knock on doors and so many doors were closed. I just kind of actually built my own door, mm. you know, so I didn't have to knock anymore. And you know, Jay-Z's first suit was not an Armani suit, it was a suit that I designed. Wow. Even though Armani said yes first, I still wanted to establish him in a way that they knew exactly what I was selling. Mm. I wanted hip hop to be hip hop culture. Mm. And I didn't want it to be, you know, ed editorial people and other people in other genres of music and in the, in the fashion space looked at us like, oh, you're music video people or you do hip hop. And I, for a second, I used to think, oh my God, I'm gonna be like typecasted as this hip hop stylist and it's awful. Yeah. And then I said, no, I said, this is one of the largest growing genres and it is the number one musical genre today. Mm. And I almost was bamboozled into thinking that it wasn't enough. And then I realized that would be me actually saying that I wasn't enough. Mm. So I had to fix myself. You know, you can easily get diminished down to, and you, lo and you lose that posture, you know, and you start to do this and this. And I just, I still walk into a room like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you want your legacy in the fashion industry to be? That I disrupted, that I'm a disruptor, that um, I did it with love. By no means that I come into the job looking to be famous or, or recognized and celebrated. For me, seeing, you know, the, the audience and the reaction and seeing young kids, you know, trying to emulate some of the looks that I kind of created in these music video genres, or whether it's a red carpet or what, whatever it is that I was touching, that it was impacting, yeah. you know? And that to me was, that was all the celebration mm -hmm. and validation that I needed. So I didn't necessarily need you to say my name because I felt like I could see my name mm -hmm. in everything that I touched, you know? And that that always just gave me butterflies. Oh, it's, it's so beautiful. And as a child of the 90s, it is safe to say at every 90s party I've been to, I've worn something that you created. So <laughs> thank awesome. you so much for being such an integral part of the culture. Thank for you. everything we look at the 90s, we cannot talk about the 90s without talking about fashion. We cannot talk about fashion in the 90s without talking about June Ambrose. So thank you. Thank you, you are amazing and you are an icon. Thank, thank you. you so much. June's impact can be felt today as other stylists continue to create looks that define their era. Ty Hunter has been with Beyonce since the Destiny Child days. If you, like the rest of us, have been entranced with Zendaya for the past few years, look no further than her personal stylist, La Roach. And as far as timeless, classic sophistication goes, refer to Jason Bolden's styling of Ava DuVernay. And the list goes on and on and on. We have been crafting and creating pop culture for decades, and it has all grown from the art of self-expression. Let the art you make be an extension of your personality. Whether it's the music you write, the boundaries you push, or the look you rock, may you continue to push the envelope in your own life unapologetically. <laughs>